Good morning, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us today for the webinar, New Advances in TIPCO Business Works Monitoring. Now, throughout the event, please feel free to submit any questions you might have using the chat panel located in the right-hand side of your screen. We will attempt to answer as many possible questions after the presentation. So with that, it's my pleasure today to introduce Kevin Bohan from TIPCO Software. Kevin? Uh, thanks, David. Today, I'm excited to be joining SL Corp presenting the advancements in monitoring. There's a number of different things that are happening that are driving these advances, but number one uh, and most significant one is the advancements that TIPCO has made in the BusinessWorks platform. We released uh, a, over a year ago BusinessWorks 6, which was the largest refresh in our history of the BusinessWorks platform. Uh, and there's a number of key enhancements to, to the platform. Uh, there's first-class development tooling. So there's significant enhancements made to the environment that developers work in uh, to create their projects. The design time environment is now Eclipse-based. It allows it to utilize um, Eclipse tooling. Uh, developers are already familiar with that environment or used to working within that environment. And we feel it's a much more powerful environment to allow the developers to work in. We've also enhanced Enhance the uh, visual debugging that allows the quickly identifying of any problems and resolution of those problems. What we've also done is significantly enhanced the capabilities that Java developers have. So now you have a choice to create your project completely in Java or use the graphical design time environment that BusinessWorks was known for. So it, it enhances significantly what Java developers are able to do. We've also opened up the platform to expand the ecosystem of tools that can work with the BusinessWorks platform. We have a plugin developers kit that allows you to focus on just the business logic of what you're going to be uh, creating the plugin around. And this wizard-based uh, developers kit will create all of the install packages, the documentation, everything that you need to create that plug-in, so you don't have to focus on any of that. You can just focus on the core logic. Um, and perhaps one of the biggest advancements in the platform is the mobile and cloud-ready support for the platform. So we have cl uh, first-class REST support now that allows you to create those applications around REST services. And um, uh, it allows you to um, basically work with those newer types of projects where um, REST is a requirement, the stateless types of applications that you're creating. We also um, have the ability to uh, remotely debug and deploy uh, projects within BusinessWorks. So it uh, greatly enhances the ability of uh, distributed deployments of your environment. What we've also done is ex uh, a number of capabilities around accelerated time to result. So we have um, the, the normal environment where you can do the zero code development. Um, but what we've also have done is made enhancements that allow you to um, develop and deploy without doing any stopping. So you have uh, the whole concept around uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment. There's a number of capabilities. And um, David, in a few minutes, is going to get into some of the architectural changes and how the monitoring tool will allow you to see um, what's taking place uh, around the um, new ways that applications are deployed. And we'll talk a little bit about, uh, more about that. But fundamentally, what's happening is the foundation and the architecture of the BusinessWorks platform has evolved significantly. So it's uh, putting more challenges on what you want to be monitoring to monitor what uh, is taking place with the environment to make sure everything's running smoothly. There's also additional challenges of um, the migration path. When you start to utilize business works for these new projects, you're not going to instantly turn off the old environments. You're going to have a hybrid environment for a while where you're going to be running the uh, traditional uh, business works technology as well as business works six uh, new deployments and monitoring a, a hybrid environment um, is something that you're going to need to be able to deal with so you can effectively manage that type of scenario and then there's also other um, design challenges around they're not challenges but really just uh, new 
methodologies in which you're going to have to um, deploy and uh, scale the different applications to ensure that it's meeting um, your requirements. So being able to track each of those different capabilities will be a significant um, requirement uh, or, or a significant challenge. So um, just real briefly, what we're going to talk about today is um, the new support built into the tools uh, around monitoring your new BW6 environments. Uh, but also advancements in the other two go technologies that the monitoring tool is able to now uh, make use of uh, and uh, also provide you statistics of what's taking place. We've also um, enhanced the templates that are provided, so now you can leverage the power of Spotfire to uh, identify particular trends within the environment and all that. So um, what I'd like to do at this point is uh, turn over control to uh, David Hickman, uh, who's going to get into a little more details about the new version of RTView and uh, what you're able to do with that technology. David? Great. Thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, we're very excited to see this new TIPCO BusinessWorks 6 platform. At SL, we have been helping TIPCO customers get the most out of their BusinessWorks platform for years. Uh, you know, we've been working with TIPCO since 2002. So, and especially with this latest BW 6.2 release, with the stability in the maturity in the platform, we're seeing a, a lot more of our customers starting to move over to that six platform and take advantage of all the new capabilities that, that's available. Now, I, I think most of you guys have probably heard of TIPCO RTView Business Works Monitor. Again, it has been available for a long time. I've seen the registration list. I know that many of you guys on the call are actually active customers of the technology. But for those of you that don't, let me give you a brief description of what TIPCO RTV Business Works Monitor is. And it's it's a performance and stability monitoring platform that combines both real-time performance data as well as historical archived data to give you detailed visibility into how Business Works is performing both right now as well as over any period of time that, that you want to choose. It comes with a number of predefined and pre-configured alerts right out of the box based on our own best practices so that you don't have to spend a lot of time you know, tweaking and trying to find the right sweet spot. There are a whole number of pre-built dashboards built around a number of our visual correlations that it makes it easier to see not only how a, a single BW instance is performing, but you know, a whole contextual group is performing or a whole environment or a whole data center or what have you that allows you to see the data in a way that you can instantly zero in on bad actor if there is one. And of course, it's all based on a distributed agentless architecture that gives you maximum performance without imposing any overhead on your existing infrastructure. So it's, it's easy to install, it's very forgiving, and you don't have to worry about any sort of performance hit or re-architecting of your applications to take advantage of this. Now, our traditional audience, and we have many audiences that are using TIPCO BusinessWorks Monitor. Traditionally, we see a lot of strength in, our, in the middleware operations teams, although uh, in many of our customers, even you know, frontline support is using it in an end-to-end -end context. And even the application architects and tier three support application guys will also use it to do uh, rapid troubleshooting. But in the case of middleware operations teams, which I think a lot of you guys are, they're using it for a number of different reasons. And, and they're able to, for one, anticipate performance problems by proactively monitoring how close uh, the performance is to a given threshold so that if you can identify an error condition or a close proximity early enough, you can nip it in the bud before it affects the overall application performance. Middleware operations teams are often able to resolve incidents faster by performing and by visualizing performance trends over time. So not only what's happening right now, but when did this, you know, backlog of messages start backing up, you know, over the last hour or whatever, and try and, and locate the root cause analysis. They are able to save a lot of time in terms of deploying new services 
by using our predefined alert thresholds and applying them globally rather than having to configure each server, each service, each app node, each app slice one at a time. And that's a, that's a big uh, ease of use function in terms of managing large deployments. And we're seeing more and more customers uh, looking at our historical data to do capacity analysis because they want to be able to save money by avoiding the traditional over-provisioning, you know, throwing too many resources at it just because you're not really sure where the breakpoints are. Uh, and we're working with a lot of customers to do this capacity planning based on the rich data that we're able to collect over time and be able to spot trends, whether it's year-long or maybe it's just in the, uh, the Black Friday shopping day or, or what have you. But ultimately, you want to save money and not spend you know, throw away money on resources that you don't actually. So let's talk a little bit about some of the new features that are in this latest release, which is TIPCO RTV BusinessWorks Monitor 6.3. As Kevin mentioned, you know, probably the most significant enhancement in this release is the support for BusinessWorks 6. And, uh, you know, we, we've definitely drank the Kool-Aid. We get how powerful Business Work 6 is, how easy it is, how it can automate the deployment uh, of applications over any number of servers. But it is, you know, if you look at the architecture, it's, it's really, it's almost a different application. Whereas Business Works 5 has, you know, engines and activities and servers, you go over to Business Work 6 and now you're looking at applications and app nodes and app slices and, and these are, are just different set of metrics that have to be monitored. Uh, now the good news is we're not giving up BW5 and we're not creating a separate application for BW6. You can monitor all of your BW engine services, activities, applications, app nodes, what have you, all in one single application so that you don't have to co-switch back and forth. And again, as, as Kevin alluded to, when you're maintaining a hybrid environment with both of these things, you want to be able to see how these things are interacting in real time uh, and not have to switch back and forth between too many tools. So not only do we have support for the latest and greatest business work, but it, it'll support whatever business works that you're working. Second is, uh, you know, depending on where you want to run business works, we can now monitor Tipco Business Works if it's running on TIPCO Silver Fabric. So if you want to run that up there in TIPCO's clouds, again, we can get that performance data from those servers today and view that in the same environment as, as any sort of physical or virtual environments. Um, and I know that Business Work 6 has a lot of new capabilities in terms of running on Amazon Web Services. And here at SL, we actually have a, an additional plugin that would allow you to monitor, you know, what's going on within the, uh, the virtual machines on Amazon as well, if that's something that you were interested in. Uh, the third thing, which I think is, is, is really significant and it's, and it's got so much runway ahead of it, is our new Spotfire report templates. So with this you know, default template, and it's something that you can actually take and modify and continue to build out yourself, you're able to do uh, some really high value activities like capacity analysis. I mean, we've worked with customers in the past who have said, well, we love the fact that you take all that historical data and you put it in a database and we have to do all this massaging in order to, to do our own capacity analysis. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to try and do that for you with some, some pre-built reports, with some extensible reports um, to give you a sense of Again, how much headroom do you have left in your system? Are you almost maxed out? Do you have too much capacity? If you're going to forecast, let's say, I don't know, 20% uh, growth in sales for Black Friday next year, is the infrastructure that I have today sufficient? If not, where do I need to make those investments? And, uh, you know, we've got some basic templates now. We're actively working with customers to fine-tune this and drive this forward. If you're interested in working with us, we'd love to hear from you. Um, we have professional services teams that are, you know, adept at helping you fine-tune those templates and working with you on your own unique business needs to uh, build a solution that provides a lot of value for, for the middleware operations teams that, after all, have to keep this thing up and running all the time. So with that, you know, there, there's only so much I can tell you about. What I want to do now is show you, and I'm going to be joined by my colleague, Gopi Parini, 
who's actually going to give you a live demo of the latest TIPCO RTView BusinessWorks monitor. So I'm going to go ahead and make Gopi the presenter. Gopi, if you can share your desktop, we're ready to go. Thank you, David. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Gopi Paremi, and I'm the Solutions Engineer here at SL. Uh, let me share my screen uh, so that you all can see what I'm seeing. Looks great. Okay. To start off with, um, due to popular demand, uh, uh, I'm going to start the demo with BW5, uh, which is the BW Classic version, um, and then move on to BW6, uh, the latest BW platform. That way you can notice the difference between BW5 and BW6 from an architectural standpoint as well as a monitoring uh, perspective. Given time. From here, you can drill down further um, into uh, uh, more server-specific metrics. So now we are inside the server SLAPM, um, and we are looking at the server. And as you see, there are five deployed engines, out of which five of them are active, which are consuming up 1.9 percent of the overall CPU. And to the right, you see a heat map of all the engines, and uh, the the size of the box is a heap uh, heap size allocated to each uh, engine, and the color is uh, color indicates the uh, the most actively running processes at any given time. So as you see, the, the one with the darker dark green has darker blue has more number of running processes, and down below you see a trend chart showing uh, that trend of the person CPU, virtual memory, and free memory available. So these trend graphs uh, show uh, real-time data as well as historical data. And you can go back uh, seven days in history and get data from all, all seven days or from today for, for, for two days or whatever. And another thing is, uh, these trends uh, can be rendered both in Adobe, uh, Adobe Flash as well as um, HTML5. So depending on what OS platform you're using, uh, it will automatically be converted, converted to the native uh, rendering platform, which is Adobe, or and if it's on Mac, it will automatically render HTML5. So now from here, from a server level, you can drill down deeper into an engine. So it looks like this is the most actively running engine. I can drill down further and get inside that engine. So now if you see, uh, I'm inside the server, inside this engine, um, and now I'm looking at the engine-specific metrics, uh, the percentage utilized, memory utilized, uh, the, the total process counts, and the running process counts. And on the right, you can see the heat map of all the processes inside the specific engine. And you can see uh, they're color coded as well as uh, the boxes. Uh, the, these boxes have are, cre are uh, the size of the boxes is driven by the total created count of the process. And as you see, the color indicates the average execution time of a specific process. So if I click on a specific process, I mean, if I hover my mouse over a specific process, you can see the average execution times are 2.5 seconds. So I can drill down further into a process and get more process level statistics. So you can see the created counts, completed counts, and uh, deltas of all the executions and elapsed times, and the total activities inside that specific uh, process. So I have a list of processes. I just picked one. And from here, you can also see the I mean, uh, all these metrics um, on on trend charts, and you can also uh, enable or uh, uh, make them inactive, uh, make a specific graph, make a specific trend inactive just by clicking on a button. And from here, you can further drill down into uh, an activities uh, level uh, so that you get more granularity into what's happening at a Java class level. So now you're looking at all the activities inside the specific process. Uh, I have about eight processes, and you can see the activity, start activity, and there are a whole bunch of executions, and the sleep and end. And you can see activity level metrics, uh, the total execution times, and elapsed times, deltas. And also, uh, if you're troubleshooting a specific application, you can see which specific activity, I mean, what, what is the activity class behind a specific activity uh, by looking at the activity class and see which one is taking longer. And also, similarly, if an, acti if an activity is failing or if an activity is taking more time for an execution, like a web service call or a database call, uh, then you can just drill down further on that activity and see what the activity is doing at any given time. And uh, also, all this, all the trend information, again, is available historically on all the displays. 
and now uh, also there is a uh, hawk views um, if you uh, as you all know uh, all these hawk agents can be logically grouped into domains so now you can look at all the hawk agents uh, in a single screen and even even if they're grouped in different domains you can see all of them in a single dashboard and from there you can get inside a hawk agent and get more os level and hardware level information just in case if you want to know what 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 os is running on, on a machine and what's the storage and network metrics at any given time and also if there's any other process that is choking that is choking a specific bw engine you can look at all the processes all the os level processes of of the specific server and then from here, we can move on to alert administration. So out of the box, BWG Monitor comes with a default set of alert definitions. So you can uh, you can just set the thresholds to whatever uh, uh, thresholds you want to. So if you see an engine, if an engine CPU used is high or an engine is stopped, so uh, there are mostly uh, these are covered on the core metrics that everyone would like to know about. Um, the operations team and uh, the management would like to know about if an engine is running, what are the metrics of an engine at any given time. You can set these alerts, uh, you can set these thresholds and uh, trigger alerts and those alerts can further be sent into uh, your emails or uh, or your uh, they can be sent in as text messages or probably SNMP traps or if, if you have any ticketing systems uh, like BMC Patrol or HP OpenView, uh, you can just raise, you can make this uh, raise request with those alert content um, uh, so the support team can uh, act on it. And now if uh, I can move on to uh, BW6. As you all know, BW6 has a different architecture and uh, uh, it has a more application specific uh, uh, nomenclature. So here um, I have all the applications inside BW6. Uh, uh, I have a list of all the applications. So now inside BW6, they still have the logical grouping of domains and underneath domains are app spaces, uh, which is app space is again a logical grouping of multiple spaces. And inside an app space, there are app nodes. App node again is a single JVM. And inside a JVM, you can run any number of BW engines. In BW Classic, uh, it used to be an engine is a JVM, but, and uh, you can only run one engine, it, uh, which is uh, one JVM. But inside an app space and uh, an app node, which is app node is a JVM, inside an app node, you can run multiple engines uh, at any given time uh, of the same application or multiple applications. So here you're looking at two applications, and both are running, and application two is running on 10 different nodes and application one is running on seven different nodes. And you can set the total active uh, active processes of uh, an application. So this is an aggregate on all the app nodes put together. So similarly, the completed processes and failed processes is an aggregate number of all the processes on all the nodes. So from here, you can drill down further onto that specific application. So now I'm inside this app space called SimSpace and uh, I have an application um, inside, I mean, I'm inside app, app called app2. So here, now you're looking at all the app nodes that this specific application is deployed onto. Uh, oh, this is deployed onto nine different nodes. And you can see individual counts, how many times uh, 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 an app slice or app instance, I'm, come to, I'm going to come to that later, uh, a specific process is created on any specific node. And on the right, you can see a bar graph showing you all the uh, created rates um, um, if, if a specific server, I mean, if a specific app node is not responding properly, you can see uh, if there's additional load on it, and you can see the uh, average executions per app node. So from here, you can drill down further, and oh, uh, down below, you can also get uh, the trends for active created count execution and elapsed times. And again, this is all historically available, similar to BWG Classic. And from here, if you drill down to a specific node, you can see uh, how many uh, uh, this app, this on this app node, um, th how this app slice is doing. App slice is again uh, an instance of a, a, an application. So um, this app slice is running on this app node five. And uh, you can see the total completed processes and the failed rates and average and execution times. And on the right, you see the processes inside this instance, this inside this app slice on app node. 
So these are all the processes, and you can see uh, the, the color indicates the average execution time. And from here, you can drill down further into a specific process. And you can get more uh, process level metrics. Um, uh, what does it mean? How many times uh, has this process been created on this app node? Um, and and uh, how many errors, uh, the average execution times, elapsed times, and what are the activity counts, the total active uh, activities that are active at any given time. And down below you can see uh, the active counts, the created counts, similar to BWG Classic. And similar to BWG Classic, uh, you can also group, um, uh, you have groupings of uh, Hawk views. Um, uh, you, can, you can group all your Hawk agents into a logical group uh, by domain name, and you can get all the Hawk agents into one single display. And similar to BWG Classic, we also have uh, alerts that are defined out of the box. And you can see uh, alerts are, alert definitions are set at different levels, uh, different objects. Uh, the uh, alerts are set at app node level, uh, process level, and an activity level. So you can set all these thresholds. Again, these, uh, these alerts can be triggered and sent to inboxes uh, via emails or texts or uh, raise, make it raise requests uh, uh, through ticketing systems or uh, send in SNMP traps, whichever way you want to do it. Uh, with that, I conclude the demo and pass the ball on to David. That was a, a great demo, Gopi. I appreciate it. And um, so let's keep going. We are getting near the end of the webinar. We won't take up too much of your time, but I do want to point out again the particular use cases where this latest version of the product is going to be particularly valuable. Kevin alluded to it, and it's in monitoring your hybrid environments. And we know that uh, a lot of customers have, are going to be deploying brand new services on BW6, but you know some of the legacy services, if it's not broken, they're, they're not going to fix it. And we'll be having to maintain hybrid environments you know, for a long time. And so having a tool that gives you visibility across your BusinessWorks platforms, regardless of what version BusinessWorks you're using for, is critical to maintaining the, the performance and stability of your environments. And to my knowledge, at least, uh, TIPCO RTView BusinessWorks Monitor is really the only monitoring tool on the market today that can do both all in the same tool. Uh, taking it one step further is the platform migration. So we have heard from other customers that have said, well, you know, if we're going to go ahead and deploy some stuff on BW6, we're going to move everything to BW6 because we just want to maintain one version of software on our back end and that's completely understandable too and having detailed visibility into the performance is is going to be critical as you move things over i think it's it's pretty common that you would you know create a new version of, of that service run it on a new set of servers and then keep them up in parallel for a period of time until you're certain that they're ready to go. Again, being able to compare and contrast the performance of both of those platforms side by side um, until such time that you're ready to shut off the old services is extremely valuable. In fact, you know, I, I would recommend that anybody who's doing migration should invest in a, a product like this if you don't already have it. Uh, at the same time, you know, there's there's no better time to really do your capacity planning, to take a look at historically, you know, how much capacity you have needed uh, over the last year in order to satisfy your, your business requirements and see if now is, is the right time to be able to add new requirements so uh, or new resources so that you can continue to maintain that performance and stability for over the next year and, and for the foreseeable future. So just to kind of summarize, there's a lot of new stuff with the latest release of BusinessWorks Monitor, uh, you can still monitor all of your existing BW5 engines, processes, activities, and servers. In addition, we've added an entirely new functionality to monitor your BW6 applications and app nodes, app slices, processes, and hosts. We can support a number of new um, platforms, such as Silver Fabric, and of course, releasing our first set of Spotfire report templates. And again, expect to see you know, a lot of new and exciting thing in that arena 
as we move forward. And of course, if you want to work with us, we want to work with you too. Um, in terms of availability, this product it's available through uh, Tipco. So if you're if you're a BusinessWorks customer, and especially if you're a BusinessWorks monitor customer, you can get the latest version from Tipco. Uh, and, and if you're one of SL's uh, enterprise monitor customers, then this is also available as a solution package for our enterprise monitor, and you can get that directly from SL. Now, having said that, I mentioned enterprise monitor, um, and this is really it, it's a a high-level offering from SL for customers that want to do end-to-end -end application performance monitoring. So from the server to the uh, infrastructure, like your app servers, uh, your databases, to the connective middleware, all the way up to the user experience. This is what we can provide with RTView Enterprise Monitor. And we have plugins for dozens of different systems that allow you to do that. If you're interested in more information on that, please please give us uh, a call. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap up the presentation, but we're going to go ahead and take some questions. And as I mentioned before, if you have any questions, please feel free to enter them in the chat panel on the uh, bottom right of your screen, and we will answer them right here. And if we can't answer them right here, then what we'll do is we'll also post the answers on TIP Community. We actively monitor that forum on TIP community, and it's a great way to, to interact with both TIPCO and SL around these particular monitoring topics. So let's see, I do have a number of questions already, and huh, it's already addressed to Gopi. So Gopi Morali from LPL asks, can we monitor different processes slash resource status in different subnets? Uh, I'm trying to understand uh, when when you say processes, uh, processes at a, at a inside a, inside a uh, app slice or a, a, in respect to BW Classic, it's inside a process inside an engine. So d different subnets. Again, we get mostly uh, we talk to Hawk in getting a data from different subnets. So uh, if 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 the subnet you are in is accessible. Uh, for Hawk from all the different subnets, then yes, we can look in, into any of the processes that are deployed on any uh, BW platform, either five or six. Fantastic. I think that's pretty simple. I've got another one for you, Gopi. Um, it says, can we customize the RTView audit database according to my enterprise needs? So I'm not sure uh, what we mean by the audit database. Uh, do you know what that means, Kopi? Um, not really. So uh, can can that question be rephrased? Uh, okay, Morali, if you can uh, kind of rephrase that, we'll come back to it. I, I will say that the uh, Spotfire report templates, yes, they can be customized uh, according to your enterprise needs. So let's see, uh, question... Uh, is the new BW monitor available through TIPCO? Absolutely. Uh, we actually have monitors. TIPCO resells monitors for both BusinessWorks, EMS, um, business events, as well as our standard monitor that allows you to create your own connectors and build your own monitoring solutions. So you can get that directly through TIPCO. And I'll point out that there is a forum on TIP community dedicated to RTView, and if you go to the TIPCO website and look under integration, monitoring and management tools, you'll see the uh, the TIPCO assets that we have there as well. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, here's a good technical question. What is the compute overhead for RTView and on what server components? Goopy, can you uh, answer that? Uh, again, um, in, in in BW Classic, we are mainly talking to Hawk, and that is the same case in BW6. But we can we do get a little uh, metadata uh, through the API in BW6. But uh, uh, we, we make uh, 
durable subscriptions to all the data via Hawk. And uh, when you're making durable subscriptions, you're not putting additional load um, on Hawk. And we have benchmark metrics on how much uh, how much load or what kind of uh, OS and hardware level resources Hawk agent is going to use when you put RTView on it. So it's not, the footprint is very minimal. Uh, we try to make uh, uh, as minimal as possible on Hawk agents. That's great. Yeah, and as I mentioned before, it is uh, an agentless infrastructure, so we don't install an agent on the business work server. That's going to take additional overhead. It's also designed with a distributed deployment, so we can cache information locally, for instance, in that one subnet, uh, while having the dis display server located in another domain. So it's, it's very respective of both load on the servers as well as load on the network as well. So let's see. Uh, another question from the, the same user. Do you require Hawk for metric collection? I want to say the answer is yes. Is that right, Gopi? Yes. Yes, absolutely. But Hawk is already built into the, the platform, so it's not really a, an add-on necessarily. Um, okay, let me see. I thought there was another... I saw two more questions. Um, yeah, I did too. Uh, how, Go ahead and read can, them, Gopi. Yeah, how can Hawk be leveraged, or is this alternative to TIPCO Hawk? Also, can this monitor uh, Hawk? So this, this is not, um, this goes in conjunction with TIPCO Hawk. Um, TIPCO Hawk doesn't get metrics for you. Uh, tip, uh, it, but, you look at TIPCO Hawk when you have problems or when something goes down, but here you're looking at real-time metrics of all the uh, of all the uh, engines or servers that that are deployed that are inside a domain on a server. So, um, also, can this monitor Hawk? Yes, uh, as I shown a few displays, uh, we can monitor Hawk agents deployed across deployed across your network. We can get all the data from OS level hardware level, and also a technology level. Uh, BW, uh, here it's BW. Yes, we get uh, uh, all these metrics from different levels. Fantastic. Well, I, I think that's about all the time we have, and luckily that's all the questions we have. But I encourage everybody on the line, if you come up with some more questions later, um, you can obviously reach out directly to us. You can go to sl.com. But I encourage you to, to find us on TIP Community and, and ask the questions there in a public forum. That way everybody gets the, the benefit of seeing the, uh, the, the both the questions and the answers. So we look forward to seeing you on TIP Community. We will be sending you a copy of the webinar as, as soon as the recording is complete. Feel free to share it with your friends and coworkers, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much.